Procedural animation has always felt like magic to me. There's something captivating about the way it can bring characters to life. Even though each and every movement is computed by an algorithm, the overall result feels fluid and natural. As someone interested in biological simulations, I was also curious about using procedural animation to visualize virtual animals. So, for the past few months, I've been learning about and exploring various procedural animation techniques. In the end, I landed on some techniques that I think are surprisingly simple and elegant. Today, I want to share these techniques with you, and walk you through the process of creating procedurally animated creatures. Let's create a point and call it the anchor. Now imagine we have a desired distance from the anchor, which we can represent with a circle. If we have some other point that we want to constrain to this desired distance, or in other words, project onto the circle, one way to do so is to draw a vector from the anchor to the point. We can then scale this vector to the desired distance, which shows us the new position of the point. This is called a distance constraint. If we continuously constrain the point while moving the anchor, an interesting behavior emerges. The point essentially follows the anchor around. Let's do this again, but with multiple points this time. We'll chain together distance constraints so that each point is constrained to the next. When we move the first point, we can see that the whole chain follows. The order in which we evaluate the distance constraints also matters. If we evaluate them starting from the last point, the chain moves from the other direction. This chain somewhat resembles a worm-like creature, and if we connect the points with thick lines, we get a better approximation. Using the chain as the body of the animal is great for animating worms, but if we want to animate something more complex, we'll need more control over the body shape. Let's create another chain, but this time, let's define a body size at each point. We can visualize this with some circles, which gives us the outline of the animal's body. Depending on the values we choose, we can have different body shapes. Since each part of the body is centered on the chain, the shape of the body is preserved even as the chain moves. The chain is now the spine of the animal, in a sense. The next step is to draw a continuous shape around the outline of the animal. To do this, we need to very briefly discuss parametric equations. This is the parametric equation for a circle. Given any radius and angle, we can find the corresponding coordinate on the circle. If we imagine that the circle represents a body segment from our animal, what we're interested in finding is the left and right sides of the body. Using the radius and direction of the body segment, all we have to do is make a quarter turn in either direction to find the sides of the body. In fact, we can use the parametric equation to draw pretty much anything relative to the segment, which will be very useful for more complex animals. Let's use this technique to draw an animal. Starting with this body shape, if we mark the left and right sides of each segment, plus some extra points for the head and tail, we'll have all the points needed for the outline. Now, we just need to connect the dots, and we have the body of our animal. Using the same parametric equation technique, we can draw some eyes to the left and right of the head segment. And with that, we have a snake animation that definitely looks much better than our previous worm animation. However, there's one problem. If the snake curves too much, we get overlapping lines, and our animation gets wonky. Just like in real life, the spine of the animal should have a maximum level of flexibility, and beyond a certain point, should no longer bend. To fix this, we can impose some angle constraints. The idea is simple. Given any two body segments, if the angular difference is too big, we scale it back to our desired threshold. After making this fix, the snake can no longer collapse in on itself. To make more complex animals, we just need to draw more features. For example, let's design a fish, starting with the basic shape and eyes. Next, we can add some fins, represented by some rotated ellipses. We can set their positions relative to some body segments using the parametric equation technique. And to make the fins look less stiff, we'll set their rotation relative to the segments in front of the fins. This will make the fins look like they're guiding the motion of the body. Next are the dorsal and tail fins, which use a more complicated technique. In essence, we sum the angular differences between each segment of the body 
to get a value that represents how curved the body is. For both fins, one side of their shape matches the curve of the spine. The other side is also the same curve, but offset using the total body curvature value. For the dorsal fin, the middle of the curve is offset to give it an oval shape. For the tail fin, the back of the curve is offset. And since the offsets are proportional to the body curvature, both fins are responsive to the movement of the fish. With that, we have a complete fish animation. Between snakes and fish, there is one thing we haven't explored yet, and that is legs. To simulate legs, we first need to talk about kinematics. Imagine we have a robotic arm with three segments. Given the length and rotation of each segment, it is pretty easy to compute where the hand of the arm is located. If we just draw circles at each joint, it becomes clear that we can just use the circle parametric equation that we previously discussed. We just have to add our answers for each segment, which gives us the coordinate of the hand. This procedure is called forward kinematics. But what happens if we invert the problem? Imagine we have a target position. How do we find the correct angles to rotate the arm in order to move the hand to this target position? This problem is called inverse kinematics, and it can be pretty complicated. Luckily, there's a very simple approximation technique that uses our previous chain simulation. First, let's mark a second point at the start of the arm. This represents the anchor, where the arm should be physically attached. If we pull the arm toward the target, we can reach the target position, though we might get pulled off of the anchor. So next, we pull back in the opposite direction, back toward the anchor. We keep repeating this back and forth pulling until we converge on an arrangement that starts from the anchor and reaches towards the target position. This technique is called fabric, or forward and backward reaching inverse kinematics. Fabric gives us a chain that can reach toward any target. If the target is too far away, the chain will still try to reach as far as it can in the direction of the target. We can use this fabric chain to simulate a leg. Imagine a fabric chain attached to the side of our animal. If we keep the target position of the chain stationary, it will appear as though the foot is not moving. We can also mark a position relative to the body, which will be the position of the next step. As the animal moves, the foot will start to fall behind the next step position. Once the foot exceeds a certain distance, we can take a step forward by updating the target position to be equal to the next step position. This gives us a basic stepping animation. So let's create an animal with legs. I'm starting out with this body shape and eyes. Then, I'll attach four legs. And just like with the animal body, I'm drawing the leg shape around the chain. And we've got a slightly derpy lizard. Anyways, that's about all I have to share for today. I am hoping to feature more procedural animation in my videos moving forward. But until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.